Good morning. I think that's live and, and well. Herm's making jokes, so it must be time to start service. <laughs> Welcome to University Lutheran Church. My name is Josh Kessler. I'm the campus pastor here at UniLu, and Pastor John Heiliger will be preaching for us a little bit later, so stay tuned to see him on screen. Uh, but um, it's good to be here. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. It felt like fall out there this morning, which is exciting. I don't think it'll last forever, but we'll hang on to it as long as possible. Um, and it's just good to be here on this Labor Day weekend together. A couple of announcements. Any uh, high school or middle school youth that you know uh, are invited to join Molly Barrow and the youth at 12 Mile Beach. I think they're meeting out there at 1130 noon, uh, so just after this service. But that's for a little bit of swimming, and I think she's providing lunch, which is exciting. So that'll be a nice day. And then next week, next Sunday, after this 11 o'clock service, we'll be having our annual God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. Uh, so there'll be a light lunch right after church, and then uh, several service projects that we can get our hands working uh, for God's work. And so some of those things, tying scrub hats, which we've done in the past, and then those go to the children in the hospital. Um, and then we'll also be traveling over to Abernathy Park to clean up a little bit, a couple of outdoor activities. Uh, just to do some good for the community, and it'll be good to be together for that. So that's next week, September 12th, uh, right after this service, right around noon, probably for that lunch. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Then let's prepare our hearts for worship with the sound of this prelude, and we can join in with the words that are in the bulletin. <laughs> you to stand as you're able and face the baptismal font for these words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. 
We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace, Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We'll sing together now the gathering hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated and we'll sing responsively Psalm 146. justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. First reading is from Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private 
away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Please be seated. Anybody that wants to come forward for the children's message can come on up.
Well, today's readings are full of promise and good news. The prophet Isaiah speaks words of hope to the Israelites who are in exile, that God will be rescuing them and bringing them home. For any who have lost their way, or worse yet, been forced from their homes due to natural disaster or violence or warfare, what hopeful news to hear. You'll be going home. This godly salvation is not some other worldly salvation to sweep by and by. But here, a glimpse of it now, on earth as it is in heaven. Isaiah uses great poetic imagery testifying to these events. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. That the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongues of the speechless sing for joy. Have you ever experienced a glimpse of that in your lifetime? I know the joy and utter relief our family felt when we heard our daughter Lauren was returning safely from her deployment to Afghanistan in the latter half of 2019. And to be at the airport to greet her with my own eyes was a joy-filled moment. Like being able to deeply exhale after six months of subconsciously holding one's breath. And God's salvation, God's restoration, goes beyond simply humankind and touches all creation. Isaiah writes, For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. For us here locally, uh, it's been great having a few cooler mornings this week. So can you even imagine instead if we were truly in a desert, not for a visit, but for day after day, week after week, and hearing these words, the burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Yes, indeed, that would be a glorious day. Along with the prophet Isaiah, the psalmist also writes of this great transformation that the Lord brings about, giving justice to the oppressed, food to those who hunger, opening the eyes of the blind, setting the captive free, lifting up those who are bowed down, loving the righteous, caring for the stranger, sustaining the orphan and the widow. Both of these readings foreshadow the one in Mark's Gospel, where it is Jesus, the Son of God, who carries out God's work. Ironically, Jesus had fled to the Mediterranean seashore for a little R&R. &R. Previous to today's reading, Jesus was in Gennesaret, where he had had a confrontation with the Pharisees and the scribes, Jewish leaders who had come from Jerusalem, the geographic heart of religious purity. Jesus had challenged the Pharisees and the scribes over that which makes someone or something ritually unclean. That is not what goes into a body that defiles, but all the evil intentions that emanate from our hearts. That is what defiles. And after that knockdown drag out, Jesus headed to the coast to get away. It was not the same as heading to a relaxing coastal spot like Hilton Head, or someplace on Jekyll Island, because Jesus was going to a predominantly Gentile region, one that would have been considered unclean and was populated by people who were not too keen on the Jewish people of the first century. So Jesus travels to an area that would have qualified as being impure and likely subject to coming into contact with the wrong kind of people. And then his situation becomes even more tenuous, specifically when he thinks he's in the privacy of a house, a woman approaches him, a woman of a different race, culture, and religion. Multiple social boundaries are being breached. What follows next is subject to interpretation. 
Some scholars believe Jesus was just yanking the woman's chain by calling her a dog, you know, testing her faith, or perhaps leading her to a point of deeper awareness and confession. To bolster that argument, they rightfully point out that this is really the only story in Mark's Gospel where Jesus initially reacts rather negatively when someone approaches him in their time of need. While others, and I include myself in this camp, point to Jesus' humanity displayed throughout Mark's Gospel and say, well, Jesus wept. He got angry at the moneylenders. He got tired, hungry, thirsty. He suffered. Couldn't he have also gotten frustrated and maybe lost it a little bit, at least once? After all, he really wanted time away, only to be hunted down and hounded inside a house. Well, whatever your interpretation of Jesus' motivation or initial response, what is clear is the exchange he had with this Gentile, Syrophoenician woman. Let the children, that is, the children of Israel, be fed first. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. In its first century cultural setting, Jesus has just insulted this woman by calling her a dog. I think this perspective is also backed up by the harsh language of take and throw versus saying words like share or pass out. Being called a dog is an insult, which by the way is still present in our language today. You son of a female dog, <laughs> or something like that. So could this encounter be that Jesus is still in this early phase in Mark's gospel, wrestling with how he is to live out his calling from God the Father, that his mission indeed was first to the people of the covenant, the Jews, so he didn't want to be sidetracked. Well, be that as it may, a mother who is convinced that you hold the key to her daughter's healing and well-being, well, you're going to have to do come up with something stronger than an insult to stop her. Yes, Jesus, you may be focused on your mission to the Jews. Well, my mission as a mother is to get help for my daughter. And I've heard that you are the one to see. So she meets Jesus' insult head on. Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. This is like verbal jujitsu, taking the energy of the insult and then redirecting it. And Jesus responds, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Notice what's missing here. The mother was operating purely out of love or concern for her child. She had no legitimate expectation for herself, a woman of a different race, culture, and religion, to deserve anything from Jesus. That is, if Jesus was going to stay in the box and within the proper social categories and decorum. But in the expansive realm, the kingdom of God, and love for others, this woman came to the right person, Jesus, the Son of God. Notice, too, that Jesus said nothing of the woman's faith. She did not have to first declare Jesus as her Lord and Savior, and then Jesus healed her daughter. No, a woman seeking healing for her child came to Jesus and would not be deterred, which could be interpreted as either faith or persistence, maybe both. And Jesus heals her daughter. This woman expressed great faith or desperation, perhaps both by first seeking Jesus out and then enduring the insult, and then probably greatest of all, trusting Jesus when he said that your daughter had been healed. At that moment, the mother has no proof of the healing, only Jesus' word. And in faith, that is enough. When Jesus left the region of Tyre and traveled back towards the region around the Sea of Galilee, 
He then heals a man unable to speak or hear, just as was promised in the words of the prophet Isaiah and in the words of the psalmist. And all the people around Jesus were greatly astounded. They saw Jesus proclaiming and demonstrating the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. And God's reign is being experienced by healings of minds, bodies, and relationships. This was a significant part of Jesus' ministry and a significant part of the ministry that God has given to us, the body of Christ. By God's grace, may we continue in God's mission of healing and redemption for the sake of the world, one person, one encounter at a time. Amen. Please rise and join in the saving of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship, enliven your church, guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. You, know, you show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world, especially as we celebrate Labor Day. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Lord, in your mercy. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Here, other intercessions may be offered. God of hope, continue to fill us with hope in the midst of this pandemic. We pray for all of your children who have suffered and continue to suffer. And we give thanks and ask for your love to touch those who work endlessly in hospitals and other healthcare facilities, especially Jennifer, Molly, Julie, Bill, Stephanie, Cindy, Lee, Lawson, Beth, Katie, Kathy, Donnie, Smith, Trey, Patrick, John, Jen, Leslie, Mike, Beth, Hannah, Tiffany, and Joseph. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we ask you, heal those who are in need of healing of mind, body, or spirit. This morning, we especially pray for Marie and family, Barbara and family,
Keith and Carol, Karen and family, Martha and Nancy, Larry, Alton, Scott, Greg, Jimmy, Gail, Pat, Rosalind, Tony, Randy, Joyce, Gary, Cece, Margaret, and any others that we name now in our hearts or on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace. As we prepare our hearts. For this holy communion, uh, let us pray. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection and ascension we await his coming in glory pour out upon us the spirit of your love O lord and unite the wills of all who share in this holy meal the body and blood of jesus christ our lord to whom with you and to the holy spirit be all glory and honor now and forever amen lord remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we share in this holy meal together, uh, you'll come up row by row, and just spread yourselves out around the altar here. Pastor John and I will come by and give you bread first, and then the wine. If you'd rather have grape juice instead of wine, just raise your index finger like this to let us know, uh, and it will be good to share this meal together. If you're watching online and taking Holy Communion, the words when you pass bread or a plate are, this is the body of Christ given for you or broken for you, and when you pass the cup, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. But this is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. You are welcome here.
please stand to receive these final blessings. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.